Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is the second episode of us building our wonderful Brim game library. Uh, and now I believe after the introduction and bootstrapping the application should be time to somehow connect to our database. So let's start that by creating new folder database and this is where our module will exist and this is basically where we'll configure our connection to the database so let's see how we can create that well the approach that i really like is to create a separate dot end file that will hold the plain configuration for our database so the uh, the password the user the port won't be leaving in the code itself but will be imported to database module so let's create that and dot env is for the environmental variables and we need few um, things here it's gonna be postgres hosts host set to local host the postgres port by default that should be 5432 postgres user uh, it should be postgres because that's the default one and then there's the postgres password which should be i believe we also set it to the default one and the postgres db will call it brim db okay so these are the values that we need to connect to the database now we need to bring that to our code uh, so let's start with the database module here uh, and here um, what we will need is to connect our database to type ORM and you may ask what is the ORM this stands for uh, object relation model i believe or something like that um object relational mapping maybe yeah okay so we won't be writing uh, our connections and queries to database uh, ourselves because I'd rather work with objects than with queries that you write by hand in SQL. And TypeRM is a um, library that will map our objects into the tables in our uh, database. But first to use it, we need to install it and we need to we need to connect it to our database. So uh, what we need here are two things. Let me separate that. We need to install um, nest JS type ORM and type ORM. Okay, these two packages. So while that is being installed um we we'll also need uh, no i believe that's it for now okay this is installed so for the database module where we will configure our wonderful connection to the database let's define it as a module right um this should be imported from nest.js common actually okay 
we can define the imports so the stuff that the module will use and it will use type rm module uh, for root async okay and you might ask what is that well earlier in app service where app module sorry where we did imports and configuration of controllers and providers this is importing just our class that we defined earlier but sometime sometimes you need to add some kind of dynamic configuration for a given module or controller or provider and this syntax for root async for root um, for feature is the way for you to dynamically configure given uh, given module and we have to specify what we'll use and we will use here a config module should come from nest.js config so let's see whether we need to install that basically nest.js config is used to read your environment variables so let's see that again yep now it's correct we need to inject that too and then we'll use factory and use config service um, config service which is of type config service and here finally we can configure our connection between type rm and database the type is postgres post can be file in config service uh, get postgres post here as you can see what is happening is that we're using the config service to read the values from our environment variable and that's basically what the config service is for you can use it to read the values from your environmental variables username that's pretty much the same uh, this is postgres user we need to specify the password password is going to be config service get postgres password and then there's a database name postgres db now we'll use two values here which are important one is entities um entities are classes that describe how your table should be structured okay for example if i'd like to have a user table in database then in nest.js and type rm i need an, a user entity okay so basically here we have to specify the path from which uh, type rm should read the configuration for the tables we will go up and we will read all the modules for the entity above ts and js so before and after compilation and then we'll provide a synchronized to true uh, we don't need that i suppose something off no it's it looks good to me declaration expected um, not really oh maybe we 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 okay we're defining the 
the module, but we need to also ex export the class for that module. That should be that. Can be empty. Now, uh, what's the problem? Okay, I don't know why it's not doing it. Delete CR, delete current return. Okay, and that, and here, okay, well, I would rather have a space here. So it seems that the configuration for the printer isn't really, well, matching my style, but that's not a problem. Uh, we'll solve it later. So now that I have database configured, I have to import that module into app module because whole application is structured again, like a tree. There's a root module, which is app module that is using other modules and mm, provides dependence injection between those. So here in our app module, uh, I will import database, database module, okay? And let's see how this goes. Uh, let's see. Let's can resolve dependencies type or a module options. Uh, we um, we installed some new stuff, so maybe it requires us to restart the whole project again. I hope so. Found zero errors. Okay. Uh, if config module, so something is wrong. Um, I know my, what that might be. Uh, we might need to do that. So add a config module here. And next can resolve dependencies. Let's try that again. I guess something is missing. Um, let's can resolve the dependencies of type ORM module options. That the argument at index zero is available in type ORM core module. What are we missing here? Let's see. Um. Okay, the issue comes. Okay. Really? Is that really the problem? Uh, let's see. Um, what? Type Postgres as Postgres. Nope. 
that does not solve the problem. Oh, okay, what else? What else? And should we export that somehow? Uh, let's see. Uh, export now, it's being exported. NestJS can resolve dependencies of type RM module options. Oh, oh, okay. I know. It should be config service. Postgres package has not been found. Okay, that's a progress. So let's install. Uh, PG package. This is the Postgres package for Node.js. Okay, try that again. Okay. Uh, client password must be a string. Okay, password looks like a, a, like a string to me. Um, client password must be a stream, a string. Postgres SS, okay, that's a typo bring db doesn't exist well now it finally makes sense because if you take a look at the databases it does not exist so let's create one brim db owner is postgres that's fine Okay, uh, and now that looks like it is working. Okay, let's just try that again, just to be sure. Okay. Uh, no more errors for now. Looks like we are connected. So this is pretty pretty good. Um, let's see what else. Well, we should create our user module. So we'll need controller, service, yeah. And from what I remember. Uh, in SJS, there's a CLI, meaning it can generate stuff for you, right? Yeah, generate schematic, um, getaway interface module, resolver, service. Okay, so basically that should be npm generate module user let's see yeah okay okay let's try that uh, npm generate module user uh, oh it should be um nest yes generate a module user, right? 
sooner that nest okay and okay we have a module okay cool um let's see controller this there's a controller okay cool um can we generate the service yes we can okay so let's add that oh sorry um nest generate service user great wonderful and it actually injects stuff that we need that's cool that's cool that's really cool okay so um let's talk about our user first things first i'd like to create an entity for it uh, and it's not going to be anything special but let's mark it as an entity and this is coming from type rm uh class of user and let's see we need a primary generated column and this is going to be uuid and this is going to be id of string okay so id of our user we have that one thing though um sometimes you see ids being used in databases as numbers um i well that's one approach i prefer to use uh, hash strings because it makes more sense to me than just incrementing a number right because uh if you delete if you have six users and you delete user number 29 then there's this strange gap in ids so yeah for me it's better to have um just strings then there's gonna be text text column and we'll specify that it has to be unique all right and this is going to be email and then column uh, representing a password also going to be a string and then we uh, export default user right uh, what is the problem it is uh, okay i can agree with that i have to change that configuration because it's driving me mad, but I'll do that, or maybe I'll show you how to do that. Um, let's see. Uh, delete CR. Uh, Alt F8. Okay. see how can we fix that yeah i believe i saw that before um try setting and prettier c um okay so oh, i don't need that going to aslint rc or prettier rc what we should have here is end of line auto c 
see where that helps. Let's reopen the file. Nope. Still there. So we're using prettier. I don't care about the unknown words, but uh, changing ESLint work for me. Okay, cool. So LF, let's do that. Okay, that does not help. Let's see. How about that? Nope. We're moving on. In my window machine, I saw it by in the rules object. Okay. So rules, 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 okay, this should be a little bit higher. No. Uh, False, let's change that. It doesn't seem to take any effect. Maybe if we reopen this. Let's see. Okay, and printer should load soon. Ha, no, now it's fine. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. we can agree on using double quotes. Okay, so that should be it. Then there is missing on no. I was there and um, okay now it's better okay so we have our entity uh, let's see where this actually works I mean where will this synchronize our database um there are schemas and there are tables and there's user table so that's good and if we try to query it we have id which is uid email and password which is just fine so we have user entity now done so the next step is actually to create user service and user controller uh, and let's do just that for the user controller oh, okay it's that very easily quick fix fix this okay so we need to define our roots and the stuff we'll be using so um, we know that our module has a service and oh come on don't do this to me um control plus okay that's faster we know that we have user controller and user service in our module this is being resolved by our dependency injection and we need that the controller will be using our service 
Therefore, I can write our constructor like private read only user service user service. Okay, and we'll create something here. Uh, let's create a route to get the user by ID. Right, and uh, this is going to be interesting because now our route to fire up let's go for the async uh, find one function to fire that route uh, will be concatenation of these two strings so it's going to be 8080 uh, user because that's in our controller and then ID of a given user, right? But we have to, well, for now it will be ID, which is stupid. I would like to parameterize, parameterize this one. So to make it a parameter, I place a colon before and now I can use param decorator from um, from from Node.js. Specify that this is going to be an ID, and then this is going to be string. So this is this will be injected into our function, and then I can just call return await this user service find by ID. ID and this should be double column. Okay, so now uh, this is all fine except for the fact what? Okay, except for the fact that our user service does not have that method. It is already marked as injectable, which is great. But we need to build that function here. So for now, I don't actually have to um, return anything from the database. I can just see where that works. So find by ID, ID of string. Just console log ID. And that should work. Meaning now if we go to user test ID. We'll not see anything here in our app, but here I can see that the ID I provided is being used in the service. So some other ID, right? And now I have my user controller using the user service. So let's see how can we push this a little bit farther? Well, I would actually like to get something from my database, right? So this is going to be interesting. What we have to use is a repository and repository is a way for us to communicate between the with type RM or telling type RM to get some type of entity or perform some kind of operation on our database. So we need to change our constructor and tell typeRM to inject the repository here. So we'll use inject repository uh, of type user. So we provide our entity type here. We say that's private 
user user repo gonna be repository of type user and empty constructor and Nest can't resolve dependencies of the user service. Okay. So maybe there is something missing here. Oh, right. Since uh, we'd like to use type RM in our module, we have to actually inform our module of that so this is user module and we need to specify that it imports type rm module for feature so again this is dynamic import and this is going to be user entity here we can specify an array we need only one so that should be fine okay um try this again looking good okay uh, this is just some um, sorry uh can we do the prepare prepare autofix um enable table clocks end of the line that's one um on save i would like to Fix on save. Uh, let's see. Val s code right here. Fix on save. Um. Okay. Format on save. Let's see. Format on save. Uh, uh huh. Okay. Yeah. I would love to have that. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Now it works. Uh, okay. So now we have our repository in our service. So if we go to the um, our function we can try and find our user and let's try and find this and here in the user repo you can see that you have um, lots of ways to uh, work with the database you can delete decrement find find and count find or fail, insert, match, remove, save, update, lots of stuff. So we'll do find one and we'll tell to sure search by ID, sorry, by ID. And if we have the user, we'll return the user. Otherwise, we should throw an error. So let's see, this should be exception from Node.js. This should be user with this ID does not exist. And we have to specify the code. Status not found. Okay, cool. And it formats also the save, so this is wonderful. So let's see. We specify that we'll get internal server error. Cool yeah this is invalid input syntax for uuid so let's generate some uuid and this should be version 4 i believe right so that's how the u supposed to look like okay so this is correct id user with this ID does not exist. Let's make him exist. And 
we should use some kind of registration form for that but in that case actually i can go to pg admin to our user table and i can edit that um email should be test um, at test.com password test password okay and then we need to save that somehow um save data changes okay now we have that saved in our database meaning if i go here again i get my user okay so whew, that was a lot so there's a controller which is using your which is working with the routes and it is using the service and the service is using the type ram repository to connect to your database and fetch data from there so it's all connected okay wow that was a little bit stressful but i think we have that figured out and in the next episode we can try and move into the uh, authorization and authentication features this this is going to be interesting so thank you for that and i will see you in the next episode goodbye